Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 sci fi horror movies. For this list, we'll be ranking the most frighteningly successful hybrids of science fiction and horror. What's your all time favorite? Let us know in the comments. Number 20 The Blob. The Blob is one of those classic movie monsters that's not mentioned often when it comes to vintage creatures from the silver screen. That's kind of a shame because this gelatinous alien has made quite an impact over the course of its cinematic history. The 1958 original in particular was notable for serving as an early starring vehicle for Steve McQueen, despite the latter's <clears throat> um, advanced age for playing a teenager. Dave, make him listen to me. There is a monster. We saw it again in Dad's store. Dave, it's bigger now. Your story's gotten bigger now, kid. Meanwhile, the 1988 remake serves as one of the most effective examples ever of how to reimagine a classic with amped up violence and special effects. Heck, The Blob was even played up for laughs in 1972 with Beware the Blob, also known as Son of Blob. Who knew interstellar slime could reproduce? No, man, he's not kidding, there's something behind you. Now, are you gonna come out, or do I have to come in and get you? Look out! Number 19, Cloverfield. The advanced marketing that went into the promotion of Cloverfield in 2008 did wonders for helping to create a mini cinematic universe for director Matt Reeves and producer J.J. Abrams. Run, 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 run! Run! Yes, run! The film dishes out equal doses of classic monster movie tropes and science fiction, all the while employing the found footage style of filmmaking popular at the time. Sure, the shaky cam and first-person POV doesn't always come across as believable during an alien invasion, but the chaotic tension and unpredictable violence that occurs more than makes up for these faults. And at the end, Cloverfield feels like the start of something special, with a fresh perspective on an old genre. Number 18, Cube. Claustrophobia can do wonders for creating horror movie magic. The Hole from 2001 made great use out of its nuclear fallout shelter setting, while 1997's Cube gets practically mathematical with its relentless puzzle solving. This room moves to 0, 1, and negative 1 on the x-axis, 2, 5, and negative 7 on y, and 1, negative 1, and 0 on z. What does that mean? You suck at math. The film feels like it predates Saw in many ways, bringing together disparate individuals who need to avoid deadly booby traps while attempting to navigate their way through a dizzying, ever-moving hellscape. The CGI effects are admittedly dated, but there aren't a lot of them, with Cube instead focusing on creating relentless tension and even making some sly social commentary. It's all the same machine, right? A Pentagon, multinational corporations, the police. If you do one little job, you build a widget in Saskatoon, and the next thing you know, it's two miles under the desert, the essential component of a death machine. It's a white knuckle ride that may have been made on a budget, but never fails to enthrall us every time we watch. Number 17, Under the Skin. Who said sci-fi and horror can't be artsy? 2013's Under the Skin could have, under less talented hands, easily devolved to some sort of direct-to-video erotic thriller. Instead, what we have is an intelligent hybrid that takes its sexualized plot points and turns them on their collective head. The tale of a seductive alien luring men to their doom isn't portrayed in a prurient manner, but instead possesses a tinge of melancholy to go along with the surreal violence. Scarlett Johansson is wonderful in the lead role, and presents her killer alien with a level of emotional pathos and even tragedy, making Under the Skin definitely feel like more than the sum of its parts. I noticed you looking at me before. Like it. Number 16, Sunshine. The cinema of Danny Boyle is nothing if not diverse, with the director being responsible for acclaimed films. 2007's Sunshine was something a bit different from Boyle, however, a slice of heady, hard sci-fi that feels very much indebted to the more cerebral examples from the 1970s. Good dream? <sighs> Let me guess. The surface of the sun? Only dream I ever have. Every time I shut my eyes, it's always the same. It's not difficult to compare Sunshine's plot of reigniting a dying sun with the sort of high-minded ideals included in classics like Silent Running or 2001 A Space Odyssey. Boyle injects his own unique approach to the material, however, ably aided by an ensemble cast that includes Michelle Yeoh, Chris Evans, and Killian Murphy. What are you asking? That we weigh the life of one against the future of mankind? Kill him. 
Consider this one an underrated gem. Number 15, A Quiet Place. The world of horror cinema felt like it was reaching a renaissance during the late 2010s, with fresh names and new auteurs entering the genre to offer up a little prestige. A Quiet Place felt like one of those films, a hit directed by Office star John Krasinski that feels in line with the work of directors like Robert Eggers, Ari Aster, and Jordan Peele. It's okay. You're safe. They can't hear us. At the same time, Krasinski's film, in which he also stars, feels more indebted to classic monster movies than its contemporaries, and this succeeds in assisting A Quiet Place to deviate from the pack. The strong performances and real emotional heart also help the film in representing the sci-fi and horror genres for a new generation. Number 14, Mimic. We've mentioned monster movies a lot thus far in our list, and that would make the director of this next film very happy. That's because Guillermo del Toro is an unabashed student of the game when it comes to horror history, a fact that felt vital even in the filmmaker's early work such as 1997's Mimic. Sure, there are killer bugs around, but the film also tosses in disaster and sci-fi tropes to create something that feels much more than your average creature feature. Nobody up there knows about this. Nobody would. Not until it's too late. These things can imitate us, they can infiltrate us, and breed a legion before anyone would even notice. The levels of action and excitement are palpable here with Mimic, and proved that Del Toro was more than capable of hanging with his idols when it came to filmmaking. Number 13, The Cabin in the Woods. One of the great things about horror fans is our ability to laugh at ourselves and the movies we love. The Cabin in the Woods knew this and walked a perfect line between parody and loving homage that still speaks to fans today. I'm chilly. Okay guys, that's it. Let's go, we got a job to do. Your basic human needs disgust me, get out of here. Director Drew Goddard and co-screenwriter Joss Whedon know all of the tropes and play them up big time within The Cabin in the Woods. Satanic demons, killer bugs, mermen, they're all here, and they all have a role to play in the larger story about awakening the old gods to destroy the world. As long as they accept our sacrifice, they remain below. But the other rituals have all failed. It's great fun, working both as comedy as well as a legit sci-fi horror banger. Number 12, Event Horizon. Is there any purer example of horror sci-fi than 1997's Event Horizon? Maybe, but there are fewer still that go for it with as much zeal, gusto, and indulgence. What happened to your eyes? Director Paul W.S. Anderson seemed to care little about subtlety or restraint when it came to Event Horizon. So much so that it's even rumored that the already ultra-violent film possesses an even more extreme cut out there in the ether. This is impressive because Event Horizon, even in its home video form, is seriously intent on combining the space horror of Alien with the sort of demonic imagery one would see in a Hellraiser film. It's truly the stuff of nightmares. From hell. You don't believe in that kind of stuff, do you? Whoever sent that message, he sure believes in hell. Number 11, Altered States. Freaky, spaced out psychedelia, thy name is Altered States. <laughs> This ridiculously imaginative and forward-thinking film from 1980 came from the maverick mind of director Ken Russell, and it shows. Altered States is hard sci-fi, sure, but it's also absolutely nightmarish with some of its imagery, specifically during the sequences where our characters are exploring sensory deprivation. <laughs> Mind-expanding chemicals certainly aren't required to enjoy Russell's film, but Altered States almost feels like an intoxicant in and of itself. So surreal, creepy, and unsettling are the final results. This one truly sits in a class all its own. Number 10, The Invisible Man. Just as horror movies are more than willing to take a step back and laugh themselves, so too do filmmakers in the modern day often feel keen to try and reinvent classic properties with a fresh new spin. The 2020 iteration of The Invisible Man certainly feels like that, expanding upon the original's themes of freedom and violence with a subplot involving domestic abuse. He said that I could never leave him. That wherever I went, he would find me. That he would walk right up to me 
and I wouldn't be able to see him. This invisible man doesn't only fall victim to the aggressive temptations offered by his new condition, he's actually pretty terrible before his physical change. Although this decreases the tragedy a bit, our new Invisible Man film also saw star Elizabeth Moss absolutely deliver the goods with a standout performance. You're just the jellyfish version of him. Everything but the spine. Number 9. Tetsuo the Iron Man Tetsuo the Iron Man is one of those films that every genre fan should see once, if only for the levels of extremity put up there on the screen. This is because plot-wise, there really isn't a lot to chew on with Tetsuo, but that's not really the point. The point is to awe and marvel at the film's transgressive nature, and to squirm as every button is pushed, and all the boundaries are washed away like the tide. <laughs> Tetsuo the Iron Man is grim, grisly, and apologetically ugly, featuring a harsh industrial soundtrack that mirrors the fleshy metal madness on screen. We warn you, this one's not for the squeamish. Number 8. Scanners Director David Cronenberg is an absolute icon of the body horror genre, but it's important to note that the Canadian filmmaker has actually had his hands in films from numerous genres, even car racing flicks. However, it's the sci-fi and horror genre that will always be Cronenberg's bread and butter. And it's easy to see why, thanks to hits like Scanners. All right, we're gonna do it the scanner way. I'm gonna suck your brain dry. Everything you are is gonna become me. You're gonna be with me, Cameron, no matter what. Cronenberg manages to create a real world here with this setting of evolved humans with incredible psychic and telekinetic powers. These scanners are able to do incredible things with these powers, including a head explosion that's gone down in the annals of cinema history. Beyond this, however, Scanners just has perfect pacing, performances, and special effects, top to bottom. It's a true classic. There's still us. I can help you. We can destroy Revic together. <laughs> you... You're barely human. Number 7, 28 Days Later. Danny Boyle returns again, this time with perhaps his most famous film next to Train Spotting, the zombie horror hybrid 28 Days Later. Jim! Jimmy's infected! No! No! Jim! This harrowing world of infected people and apocalyptic landscapes possesses a relentless power, while simultaneously avoiding the pitfalls of many other zombie movies. There's a real sense of sadness at how the world comes crashing down, as well as a level of danger constantly surrounding those left alive. 28 Days Later knows how to play its quiet cards just as much as it does its loud Ace of Spades bursts of violence. And that's just one of the reasons why Boyle's sci-fi horror mashup works so damn well. Number 6, Reanimator. You killed him. No, I did not. I gave him life. Horror comedy can be a difficult genre in which to stand out. Go too broad and you run the risk of devolving into parody. Stay too serious and the laughs never come. This is why Stuart Gordon's Reanimator is rightfully considered to be such a classic. It never shies away from the horrific deeds perpetrated by its anti-hero, Dr. Herbert West, taking direct inspiration from the H.P. Lovecraft source material. Meanwhile, the actor who plays West, Jeffrey Combs, does so in a manner that's deadpan, comedic, yet menacing. It's truly a wonderful balancing act. You couldn't call or write a note. I was busy pushing bodies around, as you well know. And what would a note say, Dan? Cat dead, details later. Oh, and did we mention that Reanimator is also incredibly gory as well? Win-win. Number 5. Invasion of the Body Snatchers Remakes are always a gamble, as not every movie fan is willing to accept a new take on something they've come to love. Thankfully, the 1978's version of Invasion of the Body Snatchers absolutely improves upon its 1950s forebear by a country mile. Officer. I would like to report four bodies in my backyard. You all right? Wait right there, Mr. Bennell. How do you know my name? Hang up, Matthew. Philip Kaufman's directorial vision speaks directly to the paranoia and downtrodden vibes of the 1970s, where everyone's a suspect and no institution is to be trusted. This makes the subtext about alien pods that assimilate their victims not only feel vitally updated, but actually timeless with how they're presented to the audience. Additionally, the decade's more permissive values about on-screen violence ensured that this body snatchers would go for the proverbial jugular, and it does not miss. <laughs> Number 4. The Thing Speaking of remakes, is there any horror remake as celebrated as John Carpenter's The Thing? Well, sure, the director's vision may have fallen on deaf eyes and ears back in 82, but today the film is rightfully considered to be one of the best of its kind. And why not? 
The tension is ramped up to a maddening degree, while the special effects of Rob Botton, Stan Winston, and crew practically turn the thing's 1950s source material to shame. From dog amalgamations to a defibrillator scene gone horribly, horribly wrong, the thing proved that man was indeed the warmest place to hide. Clear! Clear. Number 3. Frankenstein The combination of science fiction and horror may not exactly be the first thing some fans think of when analyzing 1931's Frankenstein, but it's definitely there, at the crux of the story. It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! <laughs> In the name of God, oh, I know what it feels like to be God. The Mad Doctor's obsession with creating life leads Frankenstein down some seriously dark paths. While the monstrous reveal is now part of horror movie lore and history, it's difficult sometimes to put into perspective just how important the universal movies like Frankenstein are to the established tropes we all celebrate today. To say that they don't make them like they used to is an understatement. Frankenstein is all class, style, and substance rolled into one. As I said before, I say again, Here's, here's to a son, to the house of Frankenstein. Number 2. The Fly Special effects are often a huge selling point to draw fans into a horror or sci-fi movie, and David Cronenberg's remake of The Fly has plenty of shocking scenes to spare. The real impact of The Fly isn't only the disgusting, amazing transformation of Jeff Goldblum's Seth Brundle into Brundlefly, but also the various themes at play. Uh, the computer got confused there weren't supposed to be two separate genetic patterns and it decided to uh, splice us together. There's a tragic love story to tell, as well as Cronenberg's own admitted analogies to disease and old age placed within Brundle's horrific fate. I'm saying uh, I'm an insect who dreamt he was a man and loved it, but now the dream is over and the insect is awake. Sure, we as fans can always just kick back and enjoy the fly on a visceral level, but for those who desire to delve a bit deeper, Cronenberg's vision is laid out right there on the screen. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Alien It's something of a Sophie's choice for fans of the Alien franchise, Ridley Scott's original or James Cameron's action movie sequel, Aliens. Both are amazing slices of science fiction cinema, but only the OG from 79 possesses the power of fear and the strength to shock so many years later. <laughs> Alien is just relentless terror and dread from the jump an uneasiness of the unknown as we wait and wait for that infamous xenomorph reveal. The fact that there's only one alien on the ship makes no difference. This is nail-biting stuff, and the sort of movie-going experience that definitely gets audiences going then, now, and forever. Dallas? Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.